A pleasant morning to everyone. Welcome to the virtual press conference of the Philippine Statistics Authority for the performance of the Philippine economy in the 2021 third quarter held today, November 9, 2021. I am Anja Icardo, your host for this event. Before we start, we would like to inform everyone that we are live streamed on the PSA Facebook page. Updates are also tweeted on the PSA Twitter using the hashtag PHGDP. We are honored today to be joined by our resource persons, Socioeconomic Planning Secretary, Carl Kendrick T. Chua of the National Economic and Development Authority. And from the Philippine Statistics Authority, we have Under Secretary Dr. Dennis S. Mapa, National Statistician and Civil Registrar General. We would also like to recognize the presence of other NEDA and PSA officials who are joining us today. From NEDA, we have Yusek Rosemary G. Edelion, Yusek Jonathan L. Uy, Yusek Mercedita A. Sombilia, Asek Carlos Bernardo Abad Santos, Asek Roderick M. Planta, Director Reynaldo Arcancho, and Director Thelma C. Manuel. From the PSA, we would also like to recognize Assistant National Statistician Vivian Ilarina of the Macroeconomic Account Service. Now, let us listen to Undersecretary Mapa, who will report on the performance of the Philippine economy for the 2021 third quarter. Good morning, everyone. The Philippine Statistics Authority will now report the performance of the Philippine economy for the third quarter of 2021. The Philippine Gross Domestic Product, or GDP, posted a growth of 7.1% in the third quarter of 2021. The third quarter, 2021 GDP, was about 295.1 billion pesos higher than the third quarter 2020 GDP in real prices, but about 207.8 billion lower than the second quarter 2021 GDP. The gross national income increased by 2.8% during the third quarter of 2021, but is lower compared to the 6.8% growth in the second quarter of 2021. Net primary income or NPI from the rest of the world declined by negative 52.3% during the third quarter of 2021. On a seasonally adjusted basis, GDP posted positive quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth rate of 3.8%. On the other hand, GNI recorded a 1.6% quarter-on-quarter growth rate during the third quarter of 2021. For the third quarter of 2021, industry and services grew by 7.9% and 8.2% respectively. However, agriculture, forestry, and fishing posted a contraction of negative 1.7% during the period. On a seasonally adjusted basis, only services posted a positive quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth rate of 6.6%. Agriculture, forestry, and fishing, and industry posted a quarter-on-quarter -quarter declines of negative 0.7% and negative 0.3% respectively in the third quarter of 2021. During the third quarter of 2021, per capita GDP grew by 5.8% from a decline of negative 12.8% in the same quarter of the previous year. Likewise, Per capita GNI and per capita household final consumption expenditure also posted growth rates of 1.5% and 5.7% respectively. With the GDP growth of 7.1% in the third quarter of 2021, services contributed the highest with 5.2 percentage points. This was followed by industry which contributed 2.1 percentage points to the GDP growth during the third quarter of 2021. Agriculture, forestry, and fishing contributed negatively 
with negative 0.2 percentage point during the period. Among the 16 major industries in the gross domestic product, other services like arts, entertainment, and recreation posted the highest growth rate with 20.3% during the third quarter of 2021. This was followed by human health and social work activities with 17.7% and construction with 16.8%. Meanwhile, agriculture, forestry, and fishing declined by negative 1.7%. This is the only industry that contracted in the third quarter of 2021. Major contributors to the GDP growth during the third quarter of 2021 were wholesale and retail trade, repair of motorcycles and motor vehicles with 1.3 percentage points, manufacturing with 1.04 percentage points, and construction with 0.95 percentage point. On the other hand, agriculture, forestry, and fishing contributed negatively with negative 0.2 percentage point to the growth of GDP during the third quarter of 2021. On the demand side, construction posted the highest growth rate with 23.8% during the third quarter of 2021. This was followed by intellectual property products with 21.1% growth rate and imports of goods with 16.3% growth rate. Meanwhile, valuables, imports of services, and breeding stocks and orchard development posted contraction of negative 34.1%, negative 2.3%, and negative 2.2% respectively. For the third quarter of 2021, major contributors to the growth in GDP from the expenditure side were the following. Household final consumption expenditure with 5.2 percentage points, construction with 2.5 percentage points, and government final consumption expenditure with 2.0 percentage points. On the other hand, negative contributors to the GDP growth during the third quarter of 2021 were the following. Net exports of goods and services with negative 2.2 percentage points, breeding stocks and orchard development with negative 0.05 percentage point, and volumes with negative 0.002 percentage point. The Philippine Statistics Authority appreciates your presence in this third quarter of 2021 National Accounts Press Conference. We look forward to meeting you again on the 27th of January. 2022, when we report the performance of the Philippine economy for the fourth quarter of 2021 and the annual 2021 report. Thank you very much and good morning. Thank you very much, Under Secretary Mapa. To deliver the joint statement of the economic managers on the Philippine economic performance for the 2021 third quarter, we have Socioeconomic Planning Secretary Carl Kendrick T. Chua of the National Economic and Development Authority. Colleagues in government, friends from the media, fellow Filipinos, good morning. In the third quarter of 2021, we contained the Delta variant and sustained our economic expansion, even as stringent quarantines were in place. Our strategy was correct. The results are clear. The Philippine economy grew by 7.1% year-on-year in the third quarter. This is up from the negative 11.6% in the same period last year. This is among the highest third quarter growths in the ASEAN and East Asian region. On a seasonally adjusted quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, the economy expanded by 3.8%. This indicates sustained recovery despite two weeks of the ECQ and a month of the MECQ in the country's economic centers. While observing the health protocols, our people continued to work and businesses continued to operate. At the same time, we saw the new daily infection fall from a peak of 26,000 on September 11 to less than 1,800 last November 4. 
This is due to the rapid inoculation drive from July to September, where about 19 million Filipinos were fully vaccinated. This careful balancing between COVID-19 and non-COVID-19 needs led to the continued expansion of most sectors. On the production side, the industry sector expanded by 7.9%, while the services sector grew by 8.2%. In contrast, agriculture slightly declined by 1.7%. The increase in pale production, which was aided by the continued implementation of the Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund, was more than offset by typhoon damages to other agricultural crops and by the African swine fever to livestock. On the expenditure side, growth was primarily driven by household consumption, which grew by 7.1% and accounted for 5.2 percentage points of overall GDP growth. This strong rebound points to improving consumer confidence. We expect this to be sustained in the fourth quarter given more relaxed restrictions and a higher vaccination rate. Government expenditure returned to a positive growth trend at 13.6%, reversing its contraction in the previous quarter. Moreover, total investment increased by 22%, driven by public and private construction that grew by 55.3% and 12.2% respectively. The government's decision to allow all construction activities to resume regardless of the area's quarantine status must be credited for this. Our external trade grew as well, Exports grew by 9%, while imports grew by 13.2%. The high growth of imports reflects the strong recovery of consumption and investment spending. The moderate growth of exports reflects both the global recovery as well as global logistics issues. With strong third quarter growth and overall performance in 2021, we are on track to reach the high end of our 4 to 5% growth target for 2021. Year-to-date growth is currently at 4.9%. With adequate supply of vaccine doses, the government is further accelerating the vaccination program over the next few weeks. With current trends, we expect to achieve alert level one by the onset of the new year. To further sustain our growth this year and next year, further accelerate the vaccination program reopen to alert level one in January 2022 and maximize the use of the 2021 budget. As of November 7, a total of 64.2 million vaccine doses have been rolled out. Of these, 34.7 million doses were administered as the first dose and 29.5 million were administered as the complete dose. This means that 29.5 million Filipinos or 38% of the adult population have been fully vaccinated. The numbers will improve rapidly as we continue to ramp up the vaccination program. On November 4, the Philippines exceeded 1.1 million job jabs in one day. In the coming weeks, the vaccination program will include children aged 12 to 17. When the approvals are made, we will soon include children aged 5 to 11. This opens the door to the resumption of face-to-face -face schooling beginning in January 2022. Lastly, more efficient public spending will enhance economic expansion. In the third quarter, national government disbursement surpassed the program level by 4%. Sustaining this into the fourth quarter makes achievement of our growth target certain. It has been 20 months since the pandemic struck the country. There were doubts and there were challenges in the first few months, but there was never a lack of resolve. We moved quickly to build up our health system and made provisions for massive vaccine procurement. With decisive leadership and a determined people, we are now reaping the results. In the remaining eight months of the Duterte administration, our top priority will be laying the foundation for a COVID-19 resilient society that can live with the virus. We will return to the path of rapid and more inclusive growth. We owe this to the people. It will be done. Thank you and take care.
Thank you very much, Secretary Chua. Before we start the open forum, we are pleased to welcome our media partners joining us today via video conferencing. Your press kits will be provided through email. Before we begin the Q&A segment, allow me to give some instructions so that we have an organized flow. We will prioritize the questions sent to us in advance by our media partners, organized by topic. Then depending on the remaining time that we have for this event, perhaps our resource persons can still accommodate other questions live. To our media partners joining live, you may send your questions through the Zoom chat box, in which the host will first acknowledge your name and organization, followed by your question. Another option is to ask the question directly to our resource persons. To do so, please first use the raise hand feature then wait for the host to acknowledge you before you state your question. Now, let's start with the first question. The first set of, the first set of questions are from Ms. Shaila Francisco of PV5 and Mr. Warren de Guzman of ANC. The questions are addressed to Secretary Chua. Given the easing of restrictions, is the government seeing that the Philippines will recover faster than expected? Is the 2021 full year GDP growth target still feasible? And can NEDA quantify the opportunity cost of tighter lockdowns in the first three quarters of 2021? Thank you, Shaila and Warren, for the question. Our progress in the third quarter shows that the recovery is accelerating, and it is uh, very likely that we will hit or even exceed the high end of our growth target for 2021. Of course, this uh, entails everyone's cooperation. It entails managing the risk better and moving uh, forward towards alert level one by the end of the year or early 2022. Uh, as you know, the uh, government has uh, implemented several quarantines at different levels. Uh, we have learned from our past experiences, and the last time we imposed the ECQ and the MECQ, we were able to balance the needs of the people, both against COVID-19 and against the uh, issues of poverty and joblessness. So we will continue this management of the risk, balance our uh, policy so that we can uh, ensure that those who are sick are taken care of and the far majority uh, who are not sick or not at risk of getting COVID will be allowed to work and restore their livelihood. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary Chua. On a related topic, we have another question, this time from Ms. Pilar Patrice Manuel of CNN Philippines. This is addressed to NS MAPA. By how much should the economy grow in the fourth quarter to fall within the government's 4 to 5% target ban? Thank you uh, very much for, for the question. Uh, the first uh, three quarters of 2021, our uh, average uh, GDP growth is uh, uh, about 4.9% already versus the uh, uh, three quarters of uh, 2020. So to reach the lower level of the government's target, the government's target band is uh, between 4 to 5%. Uh, to achieve the lower end, uh, GDP uh, will grow during the fourth quarter by about 1.7%. On the other hand, to achieve the higher end, uh, GDP uh, should be growing at about 5.3% during the, during the fourth quarter. Thank you. Thank you very much, NS Mapa. The next question is addressed to Secretary Chua, and it is from Ms. Kai Ordinario of Business Mirror. How will oil prices figure in, in GDP in the 2021 fourth quarter and in 2022? If oil prices reach $100 per barrel, how will this affect inflation and GDP growth? How will the government address the possible impact on economic performance? Thank you very much, Kai, for the question. Let me first uh, lay out the statistics. Uh, right now, we are around the $80 per barrel, but the futures market is showing that it is on a continuous downtrend towards the 70 plus dollars per barrel in the coming months and for the rest of 2022. So we will continuously monitor the prices and our policy will, be, uh, will, will follow 
the the trend in the prices. Uh, if if it is a short term um, increase in the oil prices, then we have already the policies in place. So we have already a three billion service contracting budget uh, that we have to fully uh, spend. We have allocated a billion peso for the uh, subsidy. We are also in talks with the private sector to provide fuel discounts. Uh, for, the, for the jeepney operators and drivers, we have a long-standing program to modernize the jeepneys. We also have the infrastructure program that is uh, reducing the time uh, that the public commuters spend in the roads. Uh, in the coming uh, months, uh, we are going to uh, review the, the numbers and make the necessary adjustment as needed. For the commuters, uh, there are also other options. The pandemic has opened the opportunity for more active transport, uh, like using bicycles. We have put in place hundreds of kilometers of bike lanes. So these are opportunities for people to also broaden uh, the way they uh, commute. Uh, finally, the IATF has approved already the increased capacity uh, of public transport from 70 to uh, 100%. And the idea here is not that we are crowding people, it is basically moving people faster. Uh, with 50% uh, uh, capacity in the past months, we saw a problem wherein the people crowd and wait in the stations. So if we move the people faster, uh, they don't need to crowd in the stations, then uh, we are also able to uh, address uh, the uh, risk uh, of the virus uh, spreading in public transport. So again, we will continue to monitor the data uh, on world prices of oil and make the necessary Um, it seems we have some technical issues. Uh, may, may I ask if you heard my response? Uh, Sir Carl, I, I think the last uh, 30 seconds, uh, we, we lost you there. Oh, well, let, let me just summarize. Uh, we will continuously monitor the global prices on oil. As uh, we are seeing now, the future prices are on a downtrend. So our policy response will, be, uh, will also be based on whether this is a temporary or a more permanent uh, increase in the oil price. But so far, we are seeing it as a downtrend. And our policies, I think, have all been uh, laid out uh, to address the temporary increase in oil prices. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary Chua. The next question is again from Ms. Kai Ordinar Kari Ordinario of Business Mirror. This is again addressed to Secretary Chua. What would be the primary growth drivers and risks for the economy in the next year? Well, on the growth drivers, I think it is very broad-based. You know, COVID-19 hit the economy broad-based. So we are seeing a broad-based recovery in the third quarter. We expect that in the fourth quarter and also in 2022. We are also hoping that the sectors that have been uh, uh, very much affected by the quarantine, so those catering to tourism, amusement, the kid industry, will see even stronger recovery because of the increase in the capacity restrictions. So those will be uh, the growth drivers. You know, on the risk to the economy, uh, it is really about an unprecedented or unknown uh, surge or a variant. Uh, we cannot use the excuse anymore of the COVID-19. We have lived with it for 20 months. We know what we can do and what we should not do. Uh, so the, the main risk that I see is really uh, an, a new variant that uh, is totally unexpected. Uh, but uh, outside that, I think we have the policy instruments and the experience to manage and uh, help the economy grow in the, in the last quarter and in the, uh, in the next year. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Secretary Chua. Uh, again, this is a question from Ms. Kai addressed to Secretary Chua. Given the recent economic performance of the country, what are your poverty estimates for the year end 2021? How many poor Filipinos will be, the, will be at the start of 2022 or when the new administration comes into office? Well, uh, as you know, from 2015 to 2018, we were able to reduce the number of poor people by 6 million Filipinos. Uh, that is around 23.5% to around 16.7% of the population. So that is a very good head start. In, uh, as we have reported uh, earlier, in uh, 2020, uh, the uh, poverty incidence may, may likely increase to around 17.5 to 17.8%, but we are seeing this on a downtrend in 2021. So we will be releasing the first half of 2021 poverty estimates in December. Uh, of course, we do not expect this to be lower than 2018, uh, but the opening of the economy, the restoration of jobs, the reduction in the rate of underemployment, and the uh, improved mobility of the people all suggest that uh, we can uh, mitigate the increase in the poverty incidence. So that, uh, please uh, expect that in the last month of the year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary Chua. The next question is from Mr. Ralph Rivas of Rappler, addressed to Secretary Chua. With better than expected third quarter growth, is the government looking at raising the target for, for full year growth? No, I think we are not going to raise the target. Uh, you either hit it uh, or exceed it. And we are hoping that we will at least hit the upper end of the uh, four to five percent or even do better because of the lowering of the alert level in the fourth quarter. And we would like everyone to cooperate, uh, help each other, um, uh, um, um, uh, follow the minimum health standard so that we will not have a reversal. So we, we hope that we will continue this alert level too. We will go through the holiday season with no surge if everyone cooperates and we will uh, open the year with an uh, even lower alert level status. So all of these are in line to help us achieve our full year high-end target or even better. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Chua. The next question is from Mr. Warren de Guzman. Uh, this is addressed to Secretary Chua. Over 4 million unemployed Filipinos were, were excluded from the benefits of third quarter GDP growth. When will GDP expansion translate to more jobs? In, in, I think in September, uh, we saw an increase in the rate of unemployment. Now we have to break this down to understand what are the underlying causes. Uh, I think, uh, uh, agri if I remember correctly, agriculture saw a decline of uh, 900,000 jobs. And this is a very seasonal and vulnerable sector. But on the non-agriculture sector, uh, broadly industry and services so an increase in the uh, in the rate of un rate of employment so we are seeing the fruits of our uh, more balanced approach to the quarantine uh, yes we did implement some stringent quarantine but it was a very targeted and granular approach which allowed majority of workers in outside agriculture to regain their job so we will continue to work uh, hard to make sure that uh, there is an opportunity for the agriculture sector to regain their jobs. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary Chua. The next question is for Yusek Mapa. This one is from Mr. Ralph Vivas of, Lab of Rappler. Yusek Mapa, can you add more details, please, on the growth in services and industry? A further breakdown of the subsectors which showed best performance and which are still struggling. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Ralph. Uh, for uh, the subsectors under the industry, uh, the uh, top two uh, performers are actually uh, manufacturing, uh, growing at 6.3% uh, during the third quarter and contributing about 1.04 percentage points in the overall GDP. Uh, the second one would be construction. And uh, this grew by 16.8% uh, uh, in the third quarter. 
and contributed about 0.95 percentage point uh, for the overall GDP. Under the services uh, sector, uh, the top contributors uh, were wholesale and retail trade. Uh, this uh, grew by 6.4% uh, in the third quarter and contributed 1.3 percentage points in the overall GDP growth. The second is uh, professional business uh, services, uh, which uh, uh, grew by uh, about 11.5% in the third quarter year on year and contributed 0.74 percentage point. And the last one under the uh, services uh, sector, uh, top contributor would be the financial and insurance uh, activities, which contributed uh, about 0.66 percentage point in the overall uh, GDP growth for third quarter. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yusek Mapa. The next question is from uh, July Rada of Manila Standard. This one is for Secretary Chua. Based on your estimate, if not due to, the, due to the stricter COVID restrictions imposed last August, what should have been the GDP growth in the, in the third quarter 2021? Uh, you know, uh, July, the computation of GDP is not uh, straightforward. Uh, we have to compute not only the total output, but the value added. But uh, as I reported, um, I think last week or two weeks ago in a forum, uh, we are monitoring the incremental gains whenever we move from a certain alert level uh, to another alert level. So uh, for instance, uh, let me just um, find the, the figure. Uh, for instance, uh, earlier, uh, when we were still in the CQ categorization, meaning ECQ, MECQ, or GCQ, uh, our estimate that for every week of ECQ imposed in the NCR plus area, our GDP was reduced by around 144.3 billion. Uh, however, uh, when we move from uh, that the CQ classification to the alert level classification, which is uh, more granular and targeted, and we limit the restrictions to the three Cs, uh, closed spaces, closed contacts, and crowds, we were able to lower that significantly. So the reduction is only 19.8%. And uh, the loss is actually smaller at 10.3 billion uh, so, sorry, 19.8 um, billion, not percent. And the loss is actually smaller at 10.3 billion per week under the present alert level two. So we are monitoring this on an incremental basis and uh, we have seen a lot of progress in the third quarter and more so in the fourth quarter. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary Chua. The next question is from Mr. Ted Cordero of GMA News. For Secretary Chua, is being under alert level two enough to achieve 5.3% growth in the fourth quarter to hit the upper end of 4 to 5% target? Or do we need to shift alert level one to achieve this? Well, I think it is uh, broadly in line with achieving our up, the upper end of the growth target. Uh, of course, uh, we do not want to rush things. We want to make sure that uh, we really implement well alert level two before we go to alert level one. Otherwise, uh, a reversal or a surge might uh, uh, you know, offset the gains that we have seen. So we will do this uh, slowly, but we are on the right direction. Thank you, Secretary Chua. The next question is for Yusek Mapa. This is from Mr. Ian Nicolas Sigalar of Philippine Star. How far or near are we now to the pre-pandemic 2019 level? Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, for uh, GDP uh, in real terms uh, for the first nine months, uh, 2021, our uh, GDP is about 13.32 trillion. And uh, as mentioned, this is higher by 4.9% uh, versus the uh, first nine months of 2020, which is 12.7 trillion. Now, for 2019, uh, first nine months of 2019, our uh, GDP uh, was estimated to be about 14.1 trillion. So comparing uh, our nine months, 2021 performance uh, versus the pre-pandemic of 2019, we are still down by about 5.7%. Thank you. Thank you very much, NS Mapa. 
The next question is addressed to Secretary Chua. This is from Ms. Shaila Marie Francisco of TV5. How is our growth compared to the other ASEAN peers? Is the government concerned that the Philippines is forecasted by some analysts to be among the region's laggards in terms of regaining its pre-pandemic economic level? Well, uh, as far as I know, the analysts all forecasted uh, much lower than the actual 7.1%. So, um, and when compared to the rest of ASEAN and East Asia, we are among the highest. So we will uh, work hard to continue this trend to ensure that we do even better uh, quarter on quarter in the fourth quarter and even, even more so in 2022. Thank you, Secretary Chua. Uh, the next question is from Mr. Warren de Guzman of ANC. This is for Secretary Chua. Are you concerned that high inflation will dampen household spending? Well, the concern is uh, there. Uh, you know, the, the, the target for the inflation target is 2 to 4%. Uh, we are above that. Of course, that will affect the, uh, the, the welfare of the people. So we have to address uh, both the prices and the income. On the prices, we have been very firm on our policy to temporarily import the uh, necessary food, uh, especially pork and some fish, so that we can put food on the table uh, that are more affordable. And so far, we are seeing the fruits of our uh, increase in the minimum access volume and the lower tariffs. In the NCR area, around NCR, in uh, Region 7, the inflation, uh, the regional inflation rate is now below 4% where we are seeing the inflation higher than 4% are in the other regions. So we have adjusted our policy so that we can uh, bring the supply of imported pork uh, to the other areas so that more people can benefit. Of course, uh, more important than that is to ensure our local production of hogs uh, will, will catch up soon once we address the African swine fever. Now, as I mentioned on the, uh, on the oil prices, uh, we will continue to monitor. Uh, this year, we are within the, uh, um, the range of the, uh, of the DBCC's oil price target. Uh, next year, uh, we will monitor and make the necessary adjustment. Uh, but so far, we are seeing the futures market going down. On the income side, because what really matters is real income, no? Uh, we are making strong progress in restoring jobs, in restoring economic activity. Under alert level two, which is uh, what we experience now in NCR and in major economic centers, 50 to seven, we, you know, we have increased the capacity to, 50, to 100% for most sectors. And for those that are affected by the three Cs, uh, crowds, close space, and close contact, it is around 50 to 70%. So there is a, a significant improvement already in the income or livelihood opportunities of the people. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary Chua. Okay, we have a live question from Mr. Ben Devera. Mr. Ben. Morning. I also posted a question on the chat box, but. Uh, in relation to Warren's question, how much faster could the GDP have uh, grown in the third quarter if not for the high consumer prices, uh, the above target inflation we experienced the past uh, months? Thank you. Uh, you're asking, uh, Ben, what GDP would be if consumer yes, prices were lower? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If, if it was at least above, uh, at least within target, sir. Thank you. Uh, let, let me let me ask Yusek Rose, Asek Kaloy, do you have any answer? If not, we will send, we will compute all these hypothetical, uh, <laughs> hypo counterfactual hypothetical <laughs> answers and send yes, it to sir. you after. Yes, sir. And just to follow up, uh, uh, with the growth in the second and third quarters, uh, uh, where are we in the goal to become a uh, an upper middle income country uh, would could we do it next year or you mentioned a few months ago that it could be delayed to 2023 but with the strong growth in the past two quarters is it attainable next year for sure thank you 
Uh, you are you, sorry, you are asking when we will get back to pre-pandemic level or the yes, upper, sir, middle, uh, upper income middle income country goals? Ah, okay. Well, uh, you, know, you know, we are monitoring these two indicators. So to get to pre-pandemic nominal GDP level, it will be certainly in 2022, uh, even as early as the first quarter. But uh, for the UMIC, for the upper middle income country, uh, you know, it is uh, really slated uh, end of 2022 or early 2023. But I think given the strong progress, uh, the likelihood of achieving that even uh, within 2022 is now higher. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary Tua and Mr. Ben. Okay, Mr. Andreo Calonzo is raising his hand. Mr. Andre, you're acknowledged. Hi, this question is for Secretary Jua. Sir, what's your outlook for household consumption for the fourth quarter? And how will the decision to allow kids in business establishment help in your uh, uh, in, in the government help the government hit its um, growth target? Uh, thank you. I, I don't have the exact figure, but uh, given the policies in place, more mobility. Uh, families can go out, uh, schools are starting uh, with pilot. Uh, I think the direction is uh, upwards. Okay, sir. And then you mentioned we can reach our pre-pandemic GDP level as early as the fourth quarter, I, first quarter next year. Is that correct? Uh, the pre-pandemic level, which is the 2019 nominal GDP level, okay. yes, possible. And so... Can you say that the economy is uh, already out of the woods in terms of 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 its um, of uh, of the effect of of the virus? And um, can we see succeeding quarters of sustained growth already? Well, so long as there is no uh, unexpected new risk uh, like a stronger variant or a global surge. Uh, then uh, I think we are clearly on track to, to a strong recovery. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary Chua and Mr. Andreo. Uh, do we have other questions from our press or media partners? Hi, this is Ben of Inquirer. I think Chino and uh, Ruel of Malaya and Chino Lake of Bulletin have their questions on the chat box. I hope you can ask them. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chino, would you like to deliver your question? Hi, good, good morning, Secretary, sir. Uh, I, uh, Secretary Dominguez has, has mentioned this several times that spending will accelerate uh, once the economy opens. But there is this theory that uh, revenge spending. Is this possible here? Do you see this happening here in the Philippines once the, the economy really fully reopens? And uh, do you think this is good or bad for, uh, for, for the whole? Uh, sorry, Chino. What is, it? what is the theory again? Revenge spending. Revenge, revenge, revenge spending. Revenge spending. Spending. Like revenge travel? Yeah. Well, Do you as, think as, it, as that I will under, happen here no, in the Philippines? Because uh, okay, as I understand the how people use that term, uh, you know, if if uh, people have not gone out and have not traveled for a long time, there would be, I think, an initial surge. Uh, not sure if that is uh, what you call revenge spending or revenge. Uh, well, you know, there would be an initial. You know, people. You know, like for me, uh, my son was four years old when the pandemic started. He is now six. He has no clothes that fit. Uh, I have to go out and bring him to the mall and buy many clothes. So I, that, that, that is, uh, I think, a, an, uh, something that we will experience uh, for many people. So there is this, I think, uh, increase in spending. Uh, you know, some people have not traveled. They want to travel for their sanity. So we will see that. Uh, but I think that will normalize uh, after after the initial surge in spending. N not sure if I uh, answered your question correctly, if you mean, th mean that. But do you think, sir, uh, do you have any estimate how much uh, Filipinos have saved since the pandemic started? Saved? Uh -oh. 
how much they have uh, no uh, you know the family income and expenditure survey will be released next uh, month the first half uh, there we will see the income expenditure and savings data so we will see uh, if they have savings you know I'm, I'm sure some some sectors some workers have savings uh, because their industry continue to operate and they don't spend much uh, but maybe other sectors uh, will not have much because their incomes were affected so we'll we'll see next month but the period of revenge spending, because there are, I've seen some tweets showing that long queues sa mga, sa mga luxury stores, like uh, buying new phones, buying new bags. Uh, how maybe long I, do you see this happening? Uh, I, I'm not sure. It depends on how they, uh, what they've been through in the last 20 months. Uh, okay, maybe you said uh, Dennis Mapa has some latest data to uh, to, to confirm if there has been some surge in spending. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Secretary. Uh, as I mentioned, the, uh, for the third quarter, the household final consumption expenditure grew by 7.1%. Uh, and uh, the top three contributors to growth under the household final consumption expenditure uh, are the following. We have miscellaneous goods and services uh, contributing uh, 1.22 percentage points. Uh, we have food and non-alcoholic beverages. So in the past, this uh, particular subsector under the household final consumption expenditure has been really growing and contributing. Uh, so we have 1.15 percentage points and we have transport. Uh, so in the past, uh, this uh, particular subsector uh, 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 went through uh, negative growth rates and now uh, contributing 1.03 percentage points. So uh, these are the, uh, the subsectors under the uh, household final consumption expenditure that are really are growing as shown in the in the third quarter uh, and uh, uh, expected to continue uh, in the fourth quarter. Thank you. Thank you very much, NS Mapa and Secretary Chua. Do we have other questions from our media partners? Okay, uh, as our last question, this one is from Ms. Ruel. Sa, paglag sa paglago ng ekonomiya ng 7.1% sa third quarter 2021, nangangahulugan po ba ito na magiging masaya ang Pasko ng mga Pilipino? Uh, I think this is for Secretary Chua. Yeah, uh, salamat po sa tanong. Um, you know, depende yan sa kalagayan ng tao, pero nakikita natin na patungo po tayo dyan. Um, Pag, paglabas nyo sa kalye, sa street, sa mall, sa iba't ibang lugar, uh, nakikita naman natin yung spirit of Christmas uh, parating na. At uh, siguro, uh, uh, hindi tulad sa nangyari po last year, uh, mas may pag-asa po yung uh, 2021. At sana po ay uh, meron din ganyan na pakiramdam ang bawat tao sa pagdating ng uh, Pasko. Thank you very much, Secretary Chua. So, we would like to thank our resource persons, Social Economic Planning Secretary Carl Kendrick T. Chua of NEDA, and Undersecretary Dennis S. Mapa, National Statistician and Civil Registrar General of ESA. We would also like to thank other officials from NEDA, ESA, and our media partners for participating in this press briefing. Once again, I am Anja Icardo from PSA, wishing you a good day ahead.